Up until now, the inventory models that we've talked about have all been uh, without any uncertainty so that you know exactly what your demand is, you know exactly what the lead time is, and so you order so that your order comes just as you run out. Uh, as we know, uh, in many cases, uh, we have uncertainty in, involved, and so we are going to look at models with uncertainty. They're also called probabilistic models. And so, if you recall, when we talked about uh, reorder points, before we considered uncertainty, reorder point was equal to days of the daily demand times lead time in days. Uh, but so so we reordered when uh, we knew exactly uh, how much we were going to use. And we reordered so that we would get it just as it just as we were using it up, and that optimized. That meant we didn't have extra carrying costs. But but what if uncertainty with respect to how much demand we get? over lead time. So, so what happens if we don't know exactly how lead, long lead time is going to be? What happens if we don't know exactly uh, how much demand we get every day? In that circumstance, we use something else. Then our reorder point is equal to demand, expected demand over lead time plus safety stock. And safety stock is is a little bit extra. It's a buffer in case you get more demand than you expected. And in order to determining safety stock, we need to understand that variability. And we need to determine the service level. And the service level is the percent of time we want to have enough inventory. And it's called a service level because it means what percentage of the time are customers going to be able to find what they want. So 100%, clearly, the higher the service level, the more uh, safety stock you have to have and uh, the more safety stock you have to have the higher the cost. So again we have that trade-off um, we have that trade-off uh, relative to uh, relative to cost and and customer service levels. So then the service the safety stock is equal to Z which is determined by service level and the standard deviation of demand over lead time. So, so then if we have those numbers it's a relatively straightforward process, right? So um, let me just flip my page here. So let's do a quick example here. We're ordering widgets. Mean or average demand over lead time. Is equal to 350. So we expect that we will have 350 uh, orders in uh, in the regular average time it takes to get our products after we place an order. The standard deviation is equal to 10. We want to have stockouts at most 
five percent of time what is Z what is safety stock and what is the reorder point so five percent stock outs means 95% service level, right? If we want to stock out 5% of the time, it means we want to have enough 95% of the time. Go to standard normal table, and we've talked about that before. I'm not going to show you one here. We look up 95% and we get a Z value equal to 1.65. Then the safety stock is equal to Z times the standard deviation of demand over lead time equals 1.65 times 10 equals 16.5 widgets. And so our reorder point is equal to 350 sorry 350 plus 16.5 so this is demand over mean average demand over lead time plus the safety stock so this is what we expect it will take on average but we want to make sure we run out less than the average amount of time so we will have uh, 16 or 17 units of uh, because you can't divide widgets 17 units of safety stock which means we will have 366 widgets is our reorder point so that means we expect that and on average we will have 16.5 units left when our order comes in because that's the uh, that's just safety stock but we will use it up some of the time too so our reorder point is the amount of stock we want to have to as, as a buffer plus what we expect will be ordered while uh, will be ordered while we're waiting for our order to come in so that seems relatively straightforward now what if you don't get the standard deviation of demand over lead time. So three things, three scenarios. The first scenario is demand is variable. And lead time is constant. In that circumstance, the standard deviation of demand over lead time is equal to the standard deviation of demand times the square root of lead time. So that's just how you calculate it. So if demand is variable, you'll be given this standard deviation. You know what lead time is, it's fixed, and that's how you do it. That was scenario one. Scenario two is demand is constant and lead time is variable. So that way we know exactly what demand is going to be, but lead time can be variable. In that circumstance, the standard deviation of demand over lead time is equal to daily demand times the standard deviation of lead time. So that one's pretty easy as well. And the third scenario is both are variable. And this one gets a little bit uglier. In that circumstance, the standard deviation of demand over lead time is equal to the square root of average lead time times this, the variance of demand over lead time plus average 
daily demand squared plus sorry times the standard DBA, the variance of lead time. So this one gets a little bit uglier, but essentially they're just three formulas. You'll see them in most uh, in most books. Let's just apply two of them. So the the rest of it is exactly the same as the other ones that we had. Uh, it's just that in this case we have to calculate demand uh, the the standard deviation of demand over lead time. So it's important to understand which standard deviation you're given. So let's go through a couple of problems here. Daily demand is 15 kgs. This is for salt. The standard deviation of demand is equal to 5 kgs per day. Lead time is equal to 4 days. And I'm going to just include holding cost is two dollars. And you're asked to determine safety stock and reorder point for a 90% service level. So the first thing we have to do is to say, do we have a standard deviation over lead time yet? So we have a standard deviation of demand. We have a lead time with no standard deviation. So lead time isn't variable. So in this circumstance, standard deviation of demand over lead time is equal to the square root of lead time times the standard deviation of demand, which is equal to the square root of four times five is equal to 10. And this, this step, don't forget this step. This is the, really the only place you can go wrong is that you take this standard deviation and use it and it's not the standard deviation of, of demand over lead time. Don't forget this step. So, Z at 90% is equal to 1.28. We looked that up at the standard normal table, relatively straightforward. Uh, demand over lead time is equal to the average, 15, times four days is equal to 60. Safety stock is equal to 1.28 times 10 is equal to 12.8. And so the re reorder point is equal to 60 plus 12.8 equals 60, oh, sorry, 72.8. Now this is kilograms, so we can use part of a kilogram so we don't need to round it up. 72.8 kilograms. So when our inventory gets to 72.8, we reorder. None of these have anything in them about what the order quantity is. And we can use EOQ, we can use POQ, safety stock is the same in both circumstances. And so uh, here we have a reorder point of uh, 72.8. And you could be asked, what's the holding cost for the safety stock? And that is simply H times safety stock is equal to 2 times 12.8 is equal to $25.6 dollars. So in this case, our <clears throat> inventories are pretty small and our holding costs are pretty, are pretty small uh, as well. So relatively straightforward, all we have to do is calculate, uh, is calculate uh, the standard deviation of demand over lead time. That is the one tricky thing. Let's do one more. Demand is equal to 10 units per day. <clears throat> Average Lead time is 12 days. Standard deviation of lead time is equal to 3 days. 95% service level. What is safety stock and what is the reorder point? Okay, so 
At 95%, we looked that up, Z is equal to 1.65. Safety stock then is equal to 1.65 times 10 times 3. And this is the standard deviation of demand over lead time. And that is simply the formula that we looked at a couple of a couple of sheets of paper ago, right? We know here that demand is variable. The demand is constant because we didn't get a standard deviation. Lead time is variable because we got a very so we do the 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 formula for that is uh, average daily demand times the standard deviation of lead time. And so this is going to give us a safety stock of 49.5 or 50 if these are units of widgets or 49.5 if they're kgs of something. What is the reorder point? In this case, reorder point is equal to demand over lead time plus safety stock is equal to 10 units per day times an average of 12 days plus 50 units of safety stock is equal to 170 units. So in this case, we would reorder inventory, uh, whatever size order we make, when our inventory hits 170 units. We would expect to use 120 units on average, but sometimes we'll, we'll use more because it takes a bit longer. Sometimes we'll use less because it comes quicker. And this 50 units of safety stock ensures that 95% of the time we have enough inventory. So the incorporation of probability or uncertainty into these models is a relatively straightforward process. We just have to think as soon as we have uncertainty, we build in safety stock and we build safety stock by understanding what our service level is going to be and understanding the sources of the variability. If I'm kind or if your instructor is kind and gives you a, a standard deviation of demand over lead time, you just multiply that by Z. But uh, in other circumstances, you have to decide if demand is variable, if lead time is variable, or if both are variable, and use one of those formulas that we outlined earlier. So really not a lot that can go wrong, just thinking about where that variability is coming from and how to calculate the standard deviation of demand over lead time. Hope that helps. Have a great day.